And do you, do you need anything for syncing or? Um, actually, could, could I just have you kind of clap <laughs> once? Well, I mean, starting at the very beginning, um, hearing loss is the most common birth condition in infants. Um, it occurs in about two to five out of every 1,000 oh, wow. uh, infants and young children. On the adult side, the, the biggest contributor on the young adult and adult side is noise-induced hearing loss. So there are other contributors. It can be disease. It can be genetics. It can be um, the byproduct of an infectious problem or a surgery. Okay. But noise is the number one, the number one factor. Well, there's an interesting phenomenon called temporary threshold shift. Mm -hmm. So you go to a concert, you're in a concert for three, four hours, you listen to a lot of loud music, you come out of the concert, and your ears feel like they're ringing, they feel mm -hmm. stuffy, you feel like things sound muffled. And then after a day or two, the ringing goes away, and that muffled sensation goes away. And then people think, oh, well, I'm fine now. Um, okay. It was just temporary. Well, it's not. We okay. know that every exposure to intense noise causes some degree of permanent damage. And so repeated exposure to intense noise um, ends up causing a frank hearing loss. Okay. So the ear really doesn't recover from exposure to loud noise, even though perceptually it might it gets feel, better, it, gets, right. it feels like it gets better, but the ear itself doesn't actually fully recover. Well, and of course, you know, one of the basic principles in research and in life is that correlation doesn't prove causation. So there was a study that came out probably six or seven years ago that showed a statistically significant rise in permanent hearing loss among U.S. population ages 6 to 19. Okay. Now, one could surmise that that's the result of noise exposure, and it most probably is the result of noise exposure, but it wasn't a... Um, it, it wasn't a study that, that controlled that on the front end. It was a gotcha. retrospective look. But we know that the incidence of hearing loss in young adults, teenagers and young adults, is increasing as compared with 20, 30, 40 years ago. I think because we can now stream our music, our phone calls, um, our podcasts, whatever we want, mm -hmm. we can now stream them into earphones so that we can be walking around uh, listening to something uh, in an environment where formerly, you know, we, you wouldn't walk down the side. Well, there was a time when people put a boom box on their shoulder. <laughs> right. um, you know, now it's gotten a whole lot smaller. <laughs> so the fact that people can be plugged into their earphones um, from the time they get up to the time or after the time they go to bed, depending on what they're listening to, there's actually the opportunity to have more sound exposure. Because, as you say, that goes into the ear canal, doesn't fully seal it, does allow other sound in the environment to get into the ear canal. So then the tendency is to turn it up turn louder. Turn it up louder. Yeah. I mean, I use that kind of earphone sometimes. And as an oh, audiologist. As an audiologist. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got a great company to do molds. Oh, I'll put you okay. in touch with them. It'll be a custom fit. They'll be perfect for you. You'll, yeah. you'll never want to use anything else. I've Which is did. interesting because, of course, a lot of our hearing aid manufacturers are now going into making molded um, earphone enclosures. Oh, fantastic. Because, you know, we, we take, as audiologists, we take ear impressions every day to mm -hmm. make hearing aids. Well, now we can do the same thing and we can actually um, take molds to have, um, to have earphones built into the mold. Really, it all comes down to the intensity of the sound at the eardrum, mm -hmm. of any sound at the eardrum, and the duration of the sound. So the, the classic patient with hidden hearing loss comes into the clinic and says, I feel like I have a hearing loss. And we do a hearing test and we tell the patient, ah, your hearing test's normal. And they come back and say, but I have difficulty hearing. I have difficulty hearing a noise. I'm missing conversations. Right. And then if you sort of scratch the surface a little bit, come to find out this is a person who's maybe had quite a bit of noise exposure. So a few years ago, um, a couple of um, brilliant people at Mass Eye and Ear, uh, Charlie Lieberman um, and Sharon Kujawa, Mm -hmm. um, began to really look at what's going on and really discovered and really began to describe hidden hearing loss as being hearing loss that is occurring sort of subclinically. Okay. So we know it's happening. Um, it's happening probably at the junction of the hair cell in the inner ear to the primary auditory neuron of the eighth cranial nerve. Okay. And so when people have hearing tests, uh, you know, our hearing tests are very gross. Hidden hearing loss is very fine. We're just not picking it up. But these are people who have difficulty hearing speech and noise. That's one of the primary complaints. In a quiet environment like we're in here, 
people hear fine. In right. a typical noise environment, um, they're not able to separate the desired speech from the ambient noise, or they have more difficulty. I think the National Institute of Deafness and, Communi and Other Communication Disorders, the NIDCD, it's part of the NIH, is a mm -hmm. very, very good um, site. They have uh, professional technical, but they also have a lot of consumer information. Um, that's the main one that comes to mind. And of course, as soon as you leave, I'll think of five, <laughs> other, <laughs> five other good places. So thanks so much. Thank you.